Hey everyone, it's Monica. Welcome back to Homeschool Voices. Today I'm going to tell you about my adventures in charter school land. Ah! What? You signed up with the devil? You with the charter school? Yes, I am. I made a deal with the devil. So any of you who know me know that it is insane that I ever signed up with a charter school. But I did it. I did. I made a deal with the devil and I signed up with the charter school. So why, you ask, why would you do such a thing? Well, I want money. And they offer, <laughs> they offer you money, that's basically it. I just want to um, explain charter schools because I had a, um, a private message from a friend recently and she was asking me some questions. Her kids are not uh, homeschooled right now. They are in public school and they are going to be homeschooled and she was asking me some questions and it it was evident that she didn't understand charter school so I thought well maybe I should explain what they are a little better in California and I think a couple of other states do this as well we have homeschool charter schools so charter schools typically are this strange beasts that are sort of a public school but not really they're different and it, they're like a normal school though you go there there's classrooms and desks but in California, we have we have normal charter schools and we have homeschool charters. So homeschool charters are this strange beast, and he, this is this is all they are. Okay, you sign up so they can track you. I'm sure. Great, I'm in the system now. Um, <laughs> you sign up. Um, they meet with they and they give you money. I mean, really, really, this is why most people do it. And I think some people who are new to homeschooling like. Um, meeting with their educational facilitator once a month. They call this person an educational facilitator or EF for short, because no one wants to say educational facilitator all the time. So you meet with your EF once a month and they help keep you on track. So I think a lot of seasoned homeschoolers don't really want to be kept on track. They just mostly want money. But I do think a lot of people new to homeschooling actually would find that comforting, honestly. Um, and I get that. So anyway, all it is, is it's a public school <laughs> and they give you money. So I, I signed up with iLead uh, in Santa Clarita, California, and they give $2,800 per student per year and they drop the money on a semester basis. So the first semester you get $1,400, the second semester you get $1,400. So you get money. And then you have to meet with your EF once every four weeks and you have to provide her with work samples. So in the four basic areas, social studies, science, language arts, and uh, math, you have to provide a work sample that is age appropriate, whatever that means. Uh, so I'm sure if they thought your child's writing was not where it should be, which I have another video on that, how ridiculous that is, but whatever. I'm sure they give you a hard time, but whatever. They just give you a hard time, and then you would just move on. <laughs> so you have to meet with that person every four weeks and provide work samples, and then they give you money. Um, now, <laughs> they don't just give you like cash to go in your bank account. You sort of have like a little charter school account, and you have money. You have to submit a form to your EF to ask permission basically for a product or a service. So a uh, service that we want to do is ice skating. You know, we have to get it approved. She has to approve it. And then, and uh, you know, we wanted to get, you know, if you want to get books, if you want to get supplies, you can get paper. I think you can even get ink. My, my kids were surprised by that. And I said, do you know how many copies that I make for your guys? That's mainly why we use our printer is this homeschool stuff. So yeah, I would like some ink. If I have extra money, I am buying some ink. Um, schools have ink. Anyway, they give you money. So that that's really it. Now, okay, so we're, some people get confused. You cannot have religious curriculum because it is a public school. So there's no surprise there. But don't let that scare you away. All they look at, that, that only applies to what they approve to purchase. So, if you don't use a charter, 
and you do a private school affidavit or a PSA, you get no money and you just buy whatever you want yourself. So if you do a charter school, if you want to buy a religious curriculum, buy it yourself, just like you would have done before and then use that extra money for something cool, like ice skating lessons or rock climbing or, some, or um, piano lessons, something that you would have had a hard time paying for. So don't let that scare you away because you can't use a religious curriculum. So now, we need to clarify that. So you can use a religious curriculum, you just don't tell them. Because they really, at the end of the day, they kind of don't care, right? Because a kid could go to public school, come home and their parents do some sort of religious science curriculum with them. Same idea here. It's just about what the, the school spends money on. They will not spend their money on a religious curriculum. You can have a, cur a religious curriculum all day long, okay? And, and the work samples that you bring in, I would imagine, should not be talking about Jesus and Moses, right? They shouldn't be religious. But you can have a religious curriculum. And so far, I am happy to report that my experience has been really good. Um, I was very anxious about meeting with this education facilitator. I've ha I have heard about um, some others' experiences not being super positive, um, but I've heard about a lot of people having very positive experiences, and I have to say that's my experience. I've only been signed up for a couple of weeks, and my EF is wonderful. Um, it's only been a couple of weeks. She, I, I mentioned that I was curious where I could take some science classes, my, or, not me, my son, and she gives me this email with this wonderful list of places in town, but also sort of in neighboring towns. I thought that was just awesome. It's just so timely. If I put in a request, if I put a request at six o'clock at night at 7.30 or seven, that woman processes the request. I mean, she's amazing. And I don't know if this is the case for everyone, but my experience has been really good. So I've not done my first meeting where I bring in work samples. So I'll let you guys know how that goes and you know, to see if we have problems. I think the important thing, if you decide to sign up with a charter, you cannot let their requirements detour you from what you think is right to do with your kids. So you need to kind of develop your own philosophy and if that's at odds with the charter, you either make it work or you don't do a charter. So I think that my, my personal philosophy is in many ways, not all ways, but many ways at odds with the charter. Um, so I just make it I'm just gonna make it work. I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to make some more videos to update you guys on it, but I think, I think it's largely gonna work just fine. And it's not, it's not so much that my philosophy is really at odds. Um, it's, it's their bureaucratic things that they require. The, what they want is for kids to be educated and my kids are being educated very, very well. It's, it's about the paperwork and how they assess an education that I think is highly flawed. It's not, it's, our philosophies are at odds, but they're not. And I didn't mention, so the first thing when I signed up for, with iLead, with the charter school, I had access to field trips, which for me is very, 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 very cool because I am not creative with field trips. I was very excited about that. Oh, you get, uh, I think there's four or four or five complimentary subscriptions that we get. So I signed up for all of them. And then if, if the school has something, if you need something like a laptop or an iPad or some book or another, um, if they have it already, you can check it out uh, for free. So you don't have to use your funds for those things. So yeah, it's been a pretty good process. You know, it's basically it's a little job where I earn $5,600 a year that I can use for my kids, which is exciting. Um, I think it's going to go well, and I'm really pleasantly surprised with how well it has gone so far. Um, I hope that was helpful. If you have more questions about charter schools in general, um, or um, 
or just about this video, if I didn't say something clearly, please put it in the comments below. Um, I just want to make sure that it's really, really clear. The charter school does not require that you use a specific curriculum for anything. You can use any curriculum. It's just that they won't buy certain things. They won't approve certain things, but you can use anything. Okay, so the charter school and the curriculum are totally different. It's like a mechanism for giving parents money and then kind of keeping track of parents and kids to make sure kids are educated. That's kind of all it is. It's a mechanism of the state, and uh, right now it's working for us. If it doesn't work for us, we won't keep doing it. Um, I just hope that I'm really clear about that because that's where some confusion lies sometimes. Okay, I hope this video was really helpful to you guys. If you liked it, please click thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, please um, click subscribe and the notification bell next to it. In the meantime, happy homeschooling and have a great day.